Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today I'm here with part two of my January wrap up. So before I get into all the books that I read in the last two weeks or so of January, let me share a few stats with you. First of all, I read a total of 15 books this month. I think I have never ever read this many books in one month. I am so proud of myself, 2020 is starting off well. I have already finished a quarter of my reading goal for 2020 and it's like only one month gone by. But anyway, 15 books. Of these 15 books, seven were rereads, so of course some of those books I read quite a bit faster. And then also eight of those books, if you can do maths, were books that were new to me and that I hadn't read before. Over those 15 books I read almost 6,100 pages, so most of those books weren't too long, but between 300 and 400 pages, although I did have two books that were quite chunky. All of the books I read in January were adult books, and as for genres, one of the books I read was a classic, which was also a play. Two of the books I read were retellings, although I put one of them into the high fantasy category as well. One book was literary fiction, seven of them were high fantasy, and that also includes the one that I counted as a retelling, and then the last five books were urban fantasy. And then as far as stars go, and I'm only counting the books that were new to me, so I'm not counting rereads, I had one five star, two four stars, one 3.5 star, two three stars, one 1.5 star, and one book that I did not give a rating. And that makes an average of 3.6 stars. So like not too bad per book this month. I mean, it could be better, but it's not too bad. So let me get started with the rereads for the second part of January. And actually all of those rereads were also in my February TBR, but who cares? And those rereads were The Invisible Ring, The Shadow Queen and Shallow Dose Lady by Anne Bishop, which are book five, seven and eight in the Black Jewel series. So I am quite good with continuing on and finishing my reread before the 10th book in the series comes out. And as always, like with The Invisible Ring, this isn't a story that follows the main characters of the original trilogy, which like in most other books, the main characters play a quite vital role. But this is set quite a few centuries beforehand and there's only really one character from the original trilogy that appears and two or three others that are mentioned. And The Invisible Ring is quite interesting for me in the series because whenever I haven't read it for quite a while I'm always saying that it's one of my least favorite in the series but whenever I reread it I just remember how much I love it and then actually The Shadow Queen and Shadow's Lady are my least favorite in the series so Shadow's Lady is my least favorite in the whole series and The Shadow Queen is the next one. I still love them of course but just they don't compare to the other seven books? Seven books in the series. So then I'm going by rating again and I want to start with the book that I didn't give any rating and that is Faust Part 2 by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. And Johann Wolfgang von Goethe I have mentioned a couple of times already. He is kind of the German Shakespeare and Faust kind of is his Hamlet, his big tragedy, although it's not really a tragedy. And Faust is a story, I mean, I think you're probably familiar with it because there are quite a few people who have told and retold this story over and over. Faust is the story of a man who wants knowledge, although with Goethe it's more experience and he wants to have like the perfect experience more than knowledge. And to get that he makes a deal with the devil. And I really didn't like reading this. I just noticed while reading Faust that I just don't enjoy reading plays. However, I did want to read it because last week I did see it in theater. I did see the play in theater. And while I did enjoy the play overall, there were parts of it that were just like really crude. And I don't like this about modern theaters or modern versions of theaters that like, somehow the directors or whatever you call it in theater just seem to think that you have to make things very sexual and very crude although Faust for its time is a very sexual play. So while I did enjoy that that was a part that I didn't enjoy although the woman who played Mephisto was so amazing and I'm probably going to see her in another play in March or April and I'm really looking forward to it because man she was so good. <laughs> 
but yeah, did not really enjoy the reading experience overall. And also part two just kind of seemed unnecessary because Faust wasn't a part of it basically at all until the very end, so yeah. If I had to give it a rating, I'd probably give it a 1.5 stars, but I do not really like feel like it'd be fair to give this a rating because I do enjoy the play as a play. And just because I don't enjoy reading plays doesn't mean that it isn't still an amazing story and a great story. So yeah, that's why I did not give this a rating. Next, I have Lady of Darkness by Diana L. Paxson, which is book two in the Westria series. And this was one of the books that I pulled from my TBR jar for January. So actually I read two books from my TBR jar in January and I did not enjoy it. This was the book that I gave 1.5 stars. It was so boring. I have never had a main character who's supposedly really feminist, but she's so absolutely useless. It's unbelievable. I did not remember anything from the first book, so maybe that was also part to play, but I did not feel like I needed to know anything from the first book because there just wasn't any connection between the first and the second book anyway. And by the time you will see this, I will also already have unhauled the entire series because not going to continue and yeah, just not worth it. Then I have Affliction by Laurel K. Hamilton, which is I think the 22nd book in the Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series, which was the series that I pulled from my series TBR chart for January. So I did manage to continue on in this series. And I did really enjoy this book. I thought there were quite a few very sweet moments. I, of course, can't say too much about this because it's the 22nd book in a series. But for those of you who do not know, the Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series is a series following Anita Blake, who is both a vampire executioner as well as an animator. So basically she can raise zombies. Most of the books are built in a way where there's a crime. She is part of the preternational investigation team. And so she helps solve the crime and gathers boyfriends along the way. I did enjoy this quite a bit more again compared to books like 10 to 19, which were mostly focusing on the boyfriends. And this was focusing on the boyfriends as well, but not as much the sex part as the emotional part. So I did enjoy that. It's way too long though for an Anita Blake book. It's over 600 pages and Anita Blake does not need that. I was so surprised when I looked at it. I think the next longest is 400 pages in the series. So do not understand where that came from. And yeah, just a guilty pleasure trash series, even though there's quite a bit of girl hate and like some kind of problematic stuff, like the time when Anita Blake like describes a black man as looking as if he's supposed to hunt lions with a spear in the savannah or something along those lines, which like, um, <sighs> I mean, this wasn't written in 2019, but it was still written in the 2010s. So maybe don't do that. Even if it was written earlier, I would still say like, maybe, maybe don't describe a black man like that. Maybe like, if this is the only way you can describe a black man, maybe just don't describe him at all, or maybe don't put a black man at all into your book. Like, I think even no representation would be preferable to your representation being described like that. Then I have Lady Hotspur by Tessa Gretchen, which kind of is the sequel to Queens of Inishlea, which I really enjoyed and which was one of my favorite books of 2019. And I thought I would enjoy this book more because it is like a second book, but not like a second book in a series, which I often enjoy less, but just a second book. And also it's gay. So I thought like gay, being gay makes everything better. So I thought I would enjoy this more and I thought I would give this five stars, but sadly it's like a 3.5 to four stars. I do not know yet. I still have a lot of thoughts that I haven't properly sorted yet on this book, which by the way is a retelling of Henry VIII, like the Shakespeare play. So yeah, I am going to have a review on this soon once I sort all my thoughts and I did enjoy it. It's very slow paced. So if you go into Tessa Gretchen's adult high fantasy books like Queens of Inishlea and Lady Hotspur, I can't talk about her YA because I've never like read any of her YA. Like 
be sure you know what you're going to get because I get the feeling that the reason why a lot of people did not enjoy Queens of Inishley and also don't enjoy Lady Hotspur is because they expect like this big grand epic fast-paced high fantasy and this is not it. There isn't a lot of plot to these books. It's mostly focused on the characters and it's very, very slow paced. That doesn't mean that it isn't still a great book. The main reason why I gave this less stars than Queens of Inishlea, although it's probably going to be a four stars because if it's anything like Queens of Inishlea, it's going to be one of those books that are in my memory going to get better the more I sit on it. Like usually if I read books, the more I sit on it, especially with YA fantasy, I give them a high rating at first, but the more I sit on it, the more I notice problems and I notice that maybe they don't deserve the high rating after all. But with Queens of Inishlea, and I think with this one as well, it's going to get better the longer I sit on it. So yeah, it's still a good book. The reason why I didn't give it five stars or like why I'm leaning towards 3.5, four stars and why I gave it less than Queens of Inishlea is because I really disliked one of the characters and also which wouldn't be a problem but I also wasn't the biggest fan of the ending but again that's going to all be more closely explained in my review. And then lastly the book that I enjoyed most in the second half of January is A Little Life by Hanya Yana Gihara with which I also like put a check mark on my goal of reading one literary fiction or classic or like non-fantasy per month because this is literary fiction. This story follows four guys living in New York from college throughout their life and their friendship and like kind of their workplaces, their developments and it's quite famous for being very heartbreaking and very hard to read. And so I went into this being kind of scared because I've seen a lot of people who say oh they never cry while reading books say that they absolutely sobbed their hearts out reading this one and so I am personally someone who cries really easily especially since I had cancer I cry even more easily while reading books it happens more often that I cry or that I like shed at least one tear during a book than like that I do not tear up at all during reading a book so I was kind of scared getting into this. However, for some reason, while it is quite heartbreaking and while it is very hard to read at parts, I still almost didn't cry. I like shed one or two tears at the beginning of the second to last part and then I cried a little bit on the last two to three pages, but there was still like a four out of 10 on my crying scale. So not too bad. I do not know why it was that way for me but yeah if you're someone who cries a lot and you're scared of getting into this book because of that like don't be scared. Also for it being literary fiction I was surprised that it's quite easy to read actually. I mean it's hard emotionally but like as far as the writing style goes it's really easy to get into even though there isn't any plot. I absolutely love the characters, I absolutely love Jude and Willem. They have my heart and they're the most precious beings ever and yeah I really enjoyed it. I didn't quite enjoy it so much that I would give it five stars but I did give it four stars and I would still recommend it uh, unless you're triggered by pretty much anything <laughs> like rape, abuse, self-harm. Um, like if, if you have any triggers, don't read this. If you don't have any triggers, I would recommend you pick it up, especially if you want to get into literary fiction. It's quite a chunker and it looks intimidating, but I did think that it was quite easy to get into. And now lastly, the two books that I'm still currently reading, th or that I was currently reading when February started. The first one is the last book in the Black Jewel series, Twilight's Dawn by Anne Bishop. I did already finish it, but I finished it in February. So you're going to have to wait for my part one February wrap up to see if I still love this as much as I did when I read it the first 500 times. And then because it finally arrived, I also started The Last Wish by Andrei Sapkowski. 
I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly, although probably not, which is the first book in the Witcher series and is a collection of short stories. And I'm really enjoying it so far. And with that said, that was it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. Tell me in the comments down below if you have read any of the books that I read this month and what your thoughts were on them and also what you read in January. Did your reading year start out as well as mine did? Because like, pew, 15 bucks is like great. And with that said, once again, all the links to my social media are in the description box down below, so go and check those out and I hope I'll see you soon. Bye.